As part of your study of inorganic chemistry at A level, you have to cover a lot of different inorganic ions and complexes and their associated colours. Using this sheet from OCR, which I will put a link to in the video description, in this tutorial I'm going to take you through all the different inorganic ions and complexes associated to copper, highlighting in particular examples of ligand substitution reaction, redox reactions, and focusing on those all-important colours that can actually unlock access to a great number of marks in the A-level exams. First off on the sheet, and we have the hexa-aqua copper 2 complex ion, which I've drawn here in the square brackets. It's octahedral, it has a copper 2 ion in the center, and it's surrounded by six H2O ligands, all forming dative covalent bonds. This hexa-aqua complex ion is formed when copper sulfate is added to water, and we can represent this in lots of different ways, depending on the reaction equation we're trying to demonstrate. For example, if I was to add dropwise ammonia or dropwise sodium hydroxide to a sample containing this complex ion, rather than showing the full thing in a reaction equation, I can instead do a simplified ionic equation, which just shows the copper 2 aqueous ion reacting with OH-, so that would be 2 moles, as you can see in this equation, to form the copper 2 hydroxide precipitate, which is a pale blue precipitate. This equation is fine for both dropwise ammonia and dropwise sodium hydroxide addition. Moving over to the right, and as you can see here, we have another example of a complex ion. It's still copper 2+, plus, but this time, the six ligands that are surrounding that transition element ion are in a ratio of 4 to 2. I've got four ammonia ligands and two water ligands, and this causes for cis-trans stereoisomerism in my complex ion. The equation for the formation of this complex ion requires the use of the full hexa-aqua complex ion formula for copper 2, which is the one we saw at the start of the sheet, and you can see here now I'm reacting it with four moles of ammonia. I need to use that full formula because I need to demonstrate that this reaction is an example of a ligand substitution. A partial ligand substitution because not all of the H2O ligands are being substituted, but a ligand substitution nonetheless. Check the formula very carefully and please don't forget to include those four H2Os as a second product at the end. Moving on, and we have another complex ion to show a ligand substitution reaction for, and it's CuCl42-. Using excess HCl added to the hexa-aqua copper 2 complex ion, we can form this yellow complex ion, which is actually tetrahedral in shape. A common misconception here is that you need to show the full HCl in the reaction equation, but as you can see here, it's much more efficient just to use 4Cl- instead. Moving over to the right, and as you can see here, we have the first of our two redox reactions. In this first redox reaction, we're going to be taking copper from a plus two oxidation state down to a plus one oxidation state. Keep an eye on your formula here as it's very easy to make a mistake. To reduce the copper two down to a copper one, we're going to use iodide ions, normally from something like potassium iodide. And what we form is a white precipitate of copper 1 iodide and some brown iodine. You need to make sure that you memorize both of these observations associated to this equation, as I have seen them come up in the exam. Moving on to our final reaction and our second redox reaction in this list, with a bit of a throwback to module 3, as this reaction is a disproportionation. The reactants in this redox reaction equation are going to be copper 1 oxide, which is Cu2O, and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Now, I did mention that this is a disproportionation redox reaction, which means that the copper 1 oxide is going to be both oxidized and reduced in the same equation. We see that it gets reduced to copper, which is an uncombined element, so has an oxidation state of zero, and would be seen as a brown solid in the test tube if you were to perform this reaction. And we also see that the copper 1 is oxidized to copper 2, which is seen in the equation as CuSO4, copper 2 sulfate, that famous blue solution. There is also a third product in this reaction equation of water, which I find is very often overlooked. So make sure you don't forget it when revising this for the exam. 
Please make sure, like using the blue numbers that I've done here, you would be able to describe this reaction in terms of oxidation state changes. This is really important when it comes to redox reactions, but particularly for disproportionation reactions, as it links back to work that you've done before in Module 3, looking at the halogens. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Don't forget there's a link in the video description to the OCR sheet that I use in this tutorial as well as a link to my full catalogue of YouTube content. Until next time though, happy revising.